today's lecture we will see some more topics on the area moments of inertia that we were discussing in the last lecture in the last lecture we saw how to determine the second moment of the area with respect to a given axis and also we saw how to use the parallel axis theorem to compute these moments with respect to a centroidal axis and then with respect to an axis parallel to the same today we will see the concept of product of inertia which is useful when we consider the rotation of axes as we saw that if we have a theorem that relates the second moment with respect to two parallel axes it becomes convenient to determine the moments when the object is translated but now if the object is rotated its moment with respect to the given axis also changes but it will become difficult if every time we have to determine the second moment by integration so we will see theorems that help us determine the second moment of a given area when an axis is rotated and in order to compute that we also need the concept of product of inertia so first we define this product of inertia as for a given area if we consider this small element da which is situated at a distance of x and y from the axis is x as well as y now we know that the second moment of this area da with respect to let us say the x axis is nothing but y square da and the same way the second moment of this area with respect to y axis is x square da so the product of inertia of this elemental area da with respect to this axis that is o x y is given as x y da so if we integrate this quantity that is x y da for this domain we get the product of inertia of the complete area that is i x y so i x y is determined as integration of x y da so if we consider areas which are having some axis of symmetry let us say this area has an axis of symmetry o x so it is possible to find these differential areas da such that for each of the area da we have a corresponding area da prime which is located at the same distance from this axis but in the negative direction so the product of the inertia of this area is nothing but xy da and the product of inertia of this element is minus xy da which is equal to da prime so it is possible to find for any differential element a corresponding element because we have this axis of symmetry ox so the summation of this is zero and thus the product of inertia for this element is zero with respect to this axis oxy so this property can be conveniently used when computing the product of inertia for symmetric objects so let us see how to apply the parallel axis theorem for the product of inertia so here let us say we have determined this product of this area with respect to an axis oxy 
then we are interested to find the product of inertia with respect to a centroidal axis. So, C being the centroid of this area, we have the parallel axis that is x prime y prime passing through the centroid. If the location of this differential element is x and y, they can be written as x bar the location of this centroid plus x prime which is the location of this differential element d a in this coordinate system that is y prime c x prime. Same way the y coordinate can be written as y bar plus y prime and thus if we have i x y which is nothing but integral of x y d a we know that i x y is nothing but integral x y d a and x is nothing but x bar plus x prime. So, we write that and if we simplify this, so let us write this, this is nothing but integral x bar y bar d a plus integral x prime y prime d a plus the quantity that is integral x bar y prime d a plus integral y bar x prime d a. This quantity is nothing but the first moment of this area with respect to this centroidal axis. So, this quantity is 0 and the same way we will find that this quantity which is again the first moment of the area with respect to the centroidal axis it is again 0. So, these two quantities become 0 and so what we have is integral x bar y bar d a which is nothing but x bar y bar integral d a is the area of this uh, element and this quantity that is x prime y prime d a integral is nothing but the product of inertia of this area with respect to this axis that is x prime y prime that is the centroidal axis. So, the parallel axis for product of inertia is found in this way, but one has to be careful that this quantity can be positive or negative. We saw that in, in case of the uh, second moments, uh, the quantity is always positive because we have y square or x square and so whether the element is in the positive or negative direction of a given axis the quantity is always positive, but in this case it determ uh, this quantity is positive or negative depending upon the sign combination of the location of this centroid with respect to the axis that we have considered that is O y x. So, if the centroid is located in other quadrants then this value will have approximate appropriate signs. So, one has to note this point that these values are measured positive from the x y axis to the centroid. So, let us take one example here you see a triangular lamina for which we are interested to determine the product of inertia. It is of height h and base b. We are interested to find the product of inertia with respect to the x y axis and with respect to the centroidal axis parallel to this x y axis. So, first we determine the product of inertia using direct integration and then we use the parallel axis theorem. So, let us take vertical differential area strips. So, here we are considering a thin vertical strip 
whose centroid is located at this distance y bar element and x bar element which is nothing but the x coordinate of the location of this element and this distance can be found by knowing the height of this thin strip that is y and so y element is y by 2 and then we can integrate it between the limits that is x from 0 to b. From the similar triangles we have this y equal to h times 1 minus x by b. So, we have considered this triangle say a b c d e. So, we consider this similar triangles that is e a d and b a c and relate this distance y and h with respect to this x and b. So, once we have this quantity we can write the area of this differential element d a as y times d x where y is this quantity h into 1 minus x by b and knowing these two quantities that is x element is x and y element is half of y which is half of h into 1 minus x by b. Now, we can write the product of inertia of this thin strip with respect to the x y axis as d i x y and then we integrate it between the limits that is 0 to b from this to this point. So, we have i x as integral d i x y which is equal to integral x bar element y bar element times d a x bar element is x itself y bar element is y by 2 which is half of h square into 1 minus x by b square d x into this area. Okay. So, now we simplify this and apply the limits we have this quantity after simplification it is 1 by 24 times of b square h square. So, this is the product of inertia of the given triangle with respect to the O x y axis. Now, we can move to determine the product of inertia with respect to the centroidal axis. We know the location of the centroid of this triangle and now we want to determine the product of inertia with respect to an axis x double prime y double prime passing through the centroid C. We know these values that is the distance of this y double prime is one third base and this is again one third of h. These are available as standard values or one can find it by the first moments of this area. And now we write the parallel axis theorem for the product of inertia that is i x y product of inertia with respect to the axis x y is equal to the product of inertia with respect to the centroidal axis plus x bar y bar a and this value is to be determined and we know this value i x y. So, we have i bar x double prime y double prime is equal to i x y minus x bar y bar a and i x y we have just determined as 1 by 24 times b square h square minus x bar is 1 by 3 b y bar is 1 by 3 h 
times the area which is half bh and from this we determine the product of inertia with respect to this centroidal axis x double prime y double prime and that is equal to this quantity that is 1 by 72 b square h square. So, in this way it is possible to apply this parallel axis to find the product of inertia of a given area. Now, let us discuss what happens to this product of inertias when the axis rotates. As we developed the theorem for the parallel axis, now we are interested to determine the relation between the product of inertia for two axes which are rotated with respect to a point. And we will see that this product of inertia is useful when we determine this relation between the uh, rotated axis and the original axis for finding the second moment. So, we have this axis O x y and this differential element d a the product of inertia and the second moments of inertia of this area with respect to this axis are known like we have the second moment of this area d a with respect to O x as y square d a and when we integrate it we get the second moment for this complete area. Same way we can determine the second moment with respect to the axis o y and also we can determine the product of inertia for this area for o y x frame. Now, we are interested to find the second moments for a rotated axis with respect to O that is x prime y prime which is rotated by an angle of theta in the counterclockwise direction. So, now we want to determine the second moments for this rotated axis. So, these values are known. Now, we want to determine the values i x prime, i y prime and i x prime y prime that is the second moments and product of inertia for the rotated axis x prime y prime. So, now let us try to relate the coordinate of this area d a in this reference frame that is O y x and the reference frame y prime O x prime. In the reference frame y prime O x prime the location of this area d a is x prime from the O y prime axis. This quantity x prime this quantity x prime is nothing but x cos theta plus y sin theta. We find that this distance is nothing but x times cos theta and this distance is nothing but y sin theta because we have this as y and this angle is again theta. So, this angle is also theta and so we have this distance as y sin theta. And same way we can write this y prime with respect to this x and y. So, we get this x prime as x cos theta plus y sin theta and y prime as y cos theta minus x sin theta which is nothing but this distance 
minus this distance. So, if we substitute in the equations that is for the equation of this i x prime we have it as integral x prime square d a and we substitute this value of x prime as x cos theta plus y cos theta and if we simplify that we get this expression and same way we can write the expression for i y prime and i x prime y prime. So, we have i x prime as i x plus i y by 2 plus i x minus i y by 2 cos 2 theta minus i x y sin 2 theta and same way we get the expression for i y prime as i x plus i y by 2 minus i x minus i y by 2 cos 2 theta plus i x y sin 2 theta. That means, we are writing the expression of the second moment of this area with respect to the new axis as a combination or an equation that relates this i x prime to the i x i y and i x y or the second moments and products of inertia of the original axis. So, these equations relate the second moments of this area in the rotated axis to the second moment of the area in the original axis that is i x i y and i x y. So, these are related to i x prime i y prime and i x prime y prime. So, these equations are nothing but the equations of a circle that we will see a little later. We know that the product of inertia is uh, the product of inertia of the uh, z axis that is the polar axis is invariant when we rotate the object or the axis or that is the sum of the second moments that is i x plus i y is equal to i x prime plus i y prime which is equal to the polar moment of inertia or the moment of inertia with respect to the z axis. Now, as we rotate these axes, the second moments keep on changing that is this i x prime and i y prime they keep on changing. But for a particular set of axes, we will see that these values become the extremum values that means they reach a maximum or a minimum value because as we rotate these axes, their distances corresponding to these axes keep on changing and for a particular orientation, we will see that the second moment with respect to these axes reaches the uh, extremum that is either they become maximum or minimum and these are known as the principal moments of inertia and the corresponding axis is known as the principal axis. So, let us see how we determine these principal axis and principal moments of inertia. In order to do that, we first see the equations of i x prime and i x prime y prime which are nothing but the parametric equation of a circle that is if we try to plot the values of i x prime y prime and i x we will get a locus corresponding to a circle whose center and radius are nothing but the average second moment of inertia that is i average is uh, i x plus i y by 2 
which is the location of this center and the radius of this circle is nothing but root of i x minus i y by 2 square plus i x y square. So, once we plot this circle then we can find that the second moment of inertia with respect to the x axis has extremum values at these two points and they correspond to the principal moments of inertia. And even if we use the other set of equations that is i y prime and i x prime y prime they also lead to the same circle. And we will find that the center of this circle is nothing but i average which is i x plus i y by 2 for a given axis and r the radius of this circle is i x minus i y by 2 square plus i x y square. And these two points that is A and B corresponds to the extremum values of this second moment of inertia because we see that for those points the value of this i x prime is maximum and here it is minimum and these are the principal moments of inertia. And for these points we find that this value i x prime y prime or the product of inertia becomes 0. So, for the set of principal axes the product of inertia is 0. And what are these values from this graph or this picture we get that this maximum value is nothing but i average plus this radius r and this value b is nothing but i average minus this radius r. So, we have this i max and i min as i average plus r minus r and we have the expression for i average and r. And these are the principal moments. Now, let us see for a given axis, let us say this point m corresponds to the second moment of inertia i x prime and product of inertia i x prime y prime. So, this point m corresponds to the set of values that is the second moment of inertia and product of inertia for a given axis and as this axis keeps rotates about O, this point moves along this circle and for each point this x uh, axis corresponds to the second moment of inertia i x prime and the y coordinate corresponds to the i x prime y prime or the product of inertia. So, let us say for a particular axis m corresponds to the point which is nothing but x i x prime and i x prime y prime. And for this point we will see that if we take this angle as 2 theta m, we will see later why we are taking this as 2 theta m. Then tan of this angle is nothing but i x prime y prime divided by this distance which is nothing but from the geometry knowing these values of i average and r it can be found that it is equal to i x minus i y by 2. So, this tan of this angle is nothing but i x y divided by i x minus i y by 2. Why we are using this uh, 
two is that the principal moments of inertia are located on axes which are 90 degree apart that means for any body let us say if I take this body if this axis let us say this is the original axis x and y and these are the axes corresponds to the principal axis then they are at 90 degrees to each other. So, let us say this is the axis corresponding to the maximum moment then this corresponds to the minimum moment second moment then they span 90 degrees. But on this diagram we see that this axis corresponds to the point A and this for B we see that it is spanned by a angle of pi. So, though this here the axis is at pi by 2 on this diagram this point A and B are located at an angular displacement of pi uh, radians. So, from this we know that this is twice the angle of the angle between the principal axes and that is why we say that if the angle between two axes is theta then the points on this circle are at an angular displacement of 2 theta. So, this equation gives a value of theta m that defines two angles 90 degrees apart which corresponds to the principal axis of the area about O. So, one value corresponds to theta m, the other value corresponds to theta m plus 90 degrees. Let us take one example to illustrate uh, how we find this principal moments and the uh, axis of these principal moments. Here you see an area which is symmetric about this O x and O y. The various dimensions are given and it is also known that the second moment of this area with respect to x and y are also given to you as 10.38 centimeter to the power of 4 and 6.97 centimeter to the power of 4. We are interested to determine the orientation of the principal axis and the values of the principal moments of inertia about O. In order to do that first we have to determine the product of inertia that is I x y for this axis O y x. So, first we determine the product of inertia with respect to this x y axis by dividing this section into three rectangles that is the rectangles corresponding to this area and this area and this area. And then we can apply the parallel axis theorem to find the second moments of or the product of inertia of these areas with respect to this axis. And later on we will determine the orientation of the principal axis and the principal moments. So, this will be our strategy. So, let us first compute the product of inertia. So, these are the three areas that is 1, 2 and 3. The location of their centroids are given here that is let us say for this area 1 it is located at 1.25 centimeters in the negative x direction and it is located at a distance of 1.75 centimeters from x axis. Let us tabulate these values and apply this parallel axis theorem because we are interested to now find the product of inertia of these individual areas with respect to O, Y, X axis. 
but we know these values for each of the centroidal axis that means for for this area 1 we know the value i x y prime with respect to I can say that this is x prime and y prime axis I can say that I know the product of inertia with respect to this axis now I want to determine the product of inertia of this area with respect to this O x y axis and then I sum up all this to determine the product of inertia of the total area. So, you please note that the product of inertia with respect to centroidal axis parallel to the x y axis is 0 for each rectangle. So, the product of inertia is actually 0 with respect to the centroidal axis. So, for the area 1 we have the area as 1.5 centimeter square, the location of the centroid as minus 1.25 and plus 1.75 and the product of this value that is x y bar a is given here. For this area 2 you can see that the location of the centroid is at O that is 0 0 and that product becomes 0. The sum of this is minus 6.56. Once we know this value we can determine I x y as actually this I x y is equal to I bar x prime y prime sigma that is sum of the products of inertia of all these uh, individual areas with respect to their centroidal axis which is 0. So, this quantity becomes 0 plus this sigma x bar y bar a and this is the quantity that we have just found and that is minus 6.5 a and that gives the product of inertia i x y of this complete section or area with respect to this o x y axis. Now, we can now move on to find the principal moments. We know this I x, I y and just now we determined this I x y as minus 6.56 centimeter to the power of 4. So, now we can determine the orientation of the principal axis and the principal moments of inertia by considering this equation that is tan 2 theta m where this angle theta m is the angle of the principal axis. Let us say this A and the axis which is at 90 degree that is B corresponds to the principal axis and if this axis that is B O A is rotated by an angle of this theta m then the values of this principle or the values of the moments become the extremum and that angle is given by this equation tan 2 theta m is equal to minus 2 i x y by i x minus i y. Since we have determined these quantities we can determine this value. So, one is 75.4 and other is theta m plus 90 which is 255.4 degrees. So, these two angles corresponds to the principal axis that is 37.7 degrees and 127.7 degrees because we know that the values that have been determined are 2 theta m. So, it corresponds to 37.7 degrees and 37.7 degrees plus 90 degrees which is 127.7 degrees. Now, we can also determine the corresponding moments that is the principal moments from this equation that i max comma i min is equal to i average which is i x plus i y by 2 
plus or minus the radius of that circle that is ix minus iy by 2 square plus ixy square. Knowing these values, we find that i max and i min are 15.45 centimeter to the power of 4 and 1.897 centimeter to the power of 4. So, this problem illustrated how we use this product of inertia and the second moment of inertia with respect to an axis to determine the second moments and product of inertia with respect to a rotated axis and also the principal axis and the principal moments. Now, we will see an another method which is a graphical procedure to determine the second moments for a rotated axis and this method we call as constructing the Mohr circle and determining the second moments and product of inertia for a rotated axis. So, we construct this circle which is the locus of the second moments and the product of inertia, we have already seen that this point x corresponds to say the second moment with respect to the x axis i x and i x y. So, along the y axis we have i x y and along the x axis we have i x. If we plot i y then that point corresponds to minus i x y and this is the value of i y. So, this diametrical line x y corresponds to the second moment of inertia and product of inertia on this circle which we call it as the Mohr circle. And this diametrical line A C B which corresponds to the maximum moments that is the principal moments lies along this x axis. And we know that if we rotate the axis by theta then on the diagram the point moves by 2 theta. So, for a given axis if B C A corresponds to the principal axis then this angle is 2 theta m or the theta by which we have to rotate to find the principal axis. It is possible now to use a graphical method by first constructing this circle and determining the required axes and values. So, if you are interested to find the second moments and product of inertia with respect to an axis which is rotated by an angle of theta in the counterclockwise direction, then on this Mohr circle we have to find a diametrical line corresponding to a rotation of 2 theta that is x prime y prime this diametrical line that you see which is rotated by 2 theta in the counterclockwise direction and these points that is x prime and y prime corresponds to the second moments that is i x prime and i y prime for that axis and the product of inertia is given by the y coordinate that is either this value or this value. So, that is i x prime y prime and this circle can be constructed by first finding the average value that is i x plus i y by 2 for a given frame and then the radius of this circle is nothing but root of i x minus i y by 2 whole square plus i x y square. So, let us see this uh, method. So, let us construct the Mohr circle for this uh, object and 
for this axis that is O x O y the corresponding moments are the points x and y that is this x corresponds to i x comma i x y and this point y corresponds to i y comma minus i x y for this area and this axis O x y. So, for an axis x prime y prime which is rotated by theta in the counterclockwise direction, if we want to know the principal moments and product of uh, the moments, we move on this graph by 2 theta and we have these points x prime y prime giving the values. And from this diagram we determine that this diametrical line that is y c x has to be rotated by this angle to make it the principal axis. So, we rotate the axis O y x by half this angle that is if this angle is 2 theta m then we rotate it by an angle theta m in the same direction that is here we see that this axis y c x has to be rotated by 2 theta m in the clockwise direction in order to get this b c a axis and that is why we rotate clockwise direction by half this angle that is theta m and we get this axis o b and a the principal axis for this area. So, we see that a graphical procedure can be followed to solve this problem and we will see one example. Let us take one typical engineering section that is an L section and a given axis that is O y x about which the values of i x, i y and i x y are known. So, in engineering convention we represent this section by this notation that is L 152 by 108 by 12.7 which tells the thickness, the width and length of this section. So, we know these values that is the second moment with respect to the x axis, y axis and the uh, product of inertia. We are interested by this Mohr circle method to determine the principal axis passing through this point O and the principal moments and also we are interested to determine the values of moments and product of inertia for this rotated axis that is x prime O y prime which is rotated by 60 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. So, let us see how we solve this problem by the Mohr circle method. So, first let us construct the Mohr circle by finding the center and radius of the Mohr circle. So, for this section we plot this point i x comma i x y and the point i y comma minus x y which are the diametrically opposite points on a Mohr circle. Then we can construct a circle passing through these two points graphically or else we can determine these values that is center and radius and also construct it, but graphical construction is also possible. That means, if we know two points which are diametrically opposite, then it is possible to construct a circle which passes through these two points. And from this let us determine this principal axis and principal moment of inertia and then we will find the product of inertia with respect to the rotated axis. So, this is our strategy. So, first let us plot this points i x comma i x y and i y comma minus i x y. So, in this picture shows the two points that is i x which is 7.24 and i x y corresponds to minus 2.54. 
So, x is the point corresponding to the second moment of inertia with respect to x axis and i x y and the diametrical opposite point is i y comma minus i x y i y is 2.61 and i x y is minus 2.54 so minus i x y is nothing but 2.54. This has been plotted in a scale of 10 to the power of 6 mm to the power of 4. So, now this diametrical line corresponds to the second moments and product of inertia for the given axis. Now, we can draw a circle passing through these two points. So, these are the values and we used it to plot this. Either we can use a graphical procedure or we can find this value of this center and the radius of this circle. The center is located at a distance of i average from this O that is half of i x plus i y which is equal to 4.925 into 10 to the power of 6 in this case. Then let us find this radius which is equal to this distance c d square plus d x square which is the square of this radius where c d is nothing but i x minus i y by 2 and this d x is nothing but i x y that is the product of inertia. So, we first find this value of c d which is 2.315 into 10 to the power of 6 m mm m to the power of 4 and this value x d is nothing but 2.54 into 10 to the power of 6 m mm m to the power of 4. So, from this we determine this radius as 3.437 into 10 to the power of 6 m mm m to the power of 4. So, on this diagram we construct a circle with center at this distance that is 4.925 and with the radius of 3.437. So, this is the corresponding circle. Now, based on this circle, we find that these points A and B are the points corresponding to the principal moments and the axis has to be rotated by this angle that is let us designate it as 2 theta m in the counterclockwise direction in order to uh, get the principal moments. So, that means if this is the axis O x y then we have to rotate half of this angle in the counterclockwise direction that is theta m in the counterclockwise direction. So, let us determine first this 2 theta m from this diagram in order to find this theta m. So, tan 2 theta m is nothing but dx divided by c d we have just now computed these values. So, from this we get 2 theta m as 47.6 degrees and theta m as 23.8 degrees. So, this axis O A is rotated by 23.8 degrees in the counterclockwise direction and this axis O B is 23.8 degrees plus 90 degrees. So, these two axis corresponds to the principal moments of inertia of the given area. Now, we can also determine their values that is the value of A and B by measuring this distance O A and O B and from the measurement it becomes 8.36 into 10 to the power of 6 m mm to the power of 4. This is also equal to I average plus R and this I minimum is nothing but this distance O B. So, you can graphically measure this or you can also compute it as I average minus R which is 1.49 into 10 to the power of 6. So, now we have determined the principal moments as well as the axis through which this uh, principal moments have been computed. We can also determine the uh, product of inertia with respect to a rotated axis. 
like we are interested to find the product of inertia with respect to an axis O x prime y prime which is rotated by 60 degrees in the counter clockwise direction. So, that means in our original diagram where we have this x c x as the diametrical line corresponding to O y x we have to rotate counter clockwise by 2 theta that is 120 degrees and we get this axis that is x prime c y prime. Now, by measuring graphically the value of O f which is nothing but the projection of this point x prime on the x axis and projection of this point y prime on the axis is g. So, we can measure these values of O f and O g which will give the second moment of inertia and we can measure this height that is x prime f or y prime g which is nothing but the product of inertia that is i x y. So, we have this value as 3.437 into 10 to the power of 6 from this diagram. We know that this is the um, i x y for for the rotated axis we find this i x prime that is this value O f as 5.96 into 10 to the power of 6 mm to the power of 4 and i y which is O g as 3.89 into 10 to the power of 6 by measuring it in this uh, uh, diagram which has been constructed to the given scale and i x y which is nothing but f x prime or g y prime which is equal to 3.28 into 10 to the power of 6 mm to the power of 4. So, these procedures illustrate how we can use this Mohr circle diagram to evaluate the product of inertia. So, in this class we saw how to determine the product of inertia and the second moment of inertia and product of inertia for rotated axis and also we saw the concept of determining the principal moments of inertia and the corresponding axes.